Yeah. Okay. Okay, so uh, I'll be talking about something completely different from epidemiology, <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, I move on to uh, immunology of uh, dengue responses. Uh, so uh, I'm. So I'm from the Center for Dengue Research, and this was established by the Ministry of Higher Education uh, to hope uh, to hope to find a long-lasting solution uh, for the dengue uh, problem in Sri Lanka and rest of the world because dengue is a huge problem in Sri Lanka. So of uh, our uh, the collaborating universities of our Center for Dengue Research uh, is University of Oxford, uh, University of Illinois, and National University of Singapore. And I'll just briefly explain. <coughs> our main objectives. So uh, our main objective is to uh, define the correlates of a protective immune response, which is so far uh, a big question, and also to define the pathogenesis of severe dengue infections. Uh, we are mainly focusing on mediators leading to vascular leak, and of course uh, also geospatial modeling of uh, socio-ecological factors influencing dengue. So our, our studies, our research is mainly focused on uh, the pathogenesis and immunology of dengue infections. So uh, the sad situation in, uh, in, in the world everywhere is uh, currently the only management uh, of, of dengue is, uh, uh, is meticulous fluid management to, uh, so that you, know, uh, you optimize fluid management uh, according to vascular leak. And uh, although there has been, uh, we, a lot of people had a hope uh, for upcoming vaccine, uh, there are phase two B clinical trial result, two virus serotype, and the overall efficacy of the phase uh, of their vaccine was uh, a mere thirty point two percent, was quite disappointing uh, to a lot of people. Um, so uh, right now, the sad situation is, of course, managing uh, uh, dengue and also uh, vector control. So uh, although uh, dengue is causing a lot of problems everywhere, uh, we have to uh, realize that the majority of dengue infections are actually asymptomatic, which so, uh, show no clinical signs, or manifest as undifferentiated fever, uh, and it's, it's a minority that manifests as dengue fever, and an even smaller pro uh, proportion actually uh, who manifest as dengue hemorrhagic fever or dengue shock syndrome. So, uh, and uh, a lot of people have been putting uh, uh, efforts to understand the pathogenesis of dengue hemorrhagic fever and dengue shock syndrome, uh, but uh, we believe that uh, other than studying dengue in an acute setting, uh, that uh, it's important to study the immune responses of people who develop asymptomatic dengue infection because they repeatedly get uh, dengue infections from various serotypes and, have, uh, and appear to be fine. So uh, the, the, the key question we're trying to answer is to find out how individuals are protected from severe clinical disease, uh, whether you know, if they have high neutralizing antibody levels, are they protected, or what test would measure correlates of protection, uh, and what is this antibody treater, and what is the best test to measure it is, is this the PRNTs, is it some other test, um, you know, are things like cross-reactive antibody responses bad, uh, are T cell responses bad, or do you need T cell responses for protection because these important questions are needed uh, in vaccine uh, design um, uh, to uh, understand whether you need to develop vaccine which mainly targets antibody response like the Calmeric vaccine which has the PRM manual of protein or whether you need to develop a vaccine which also targets T cell responses. So, I mean, uh, so many have uh, uh, so, uh, so many people have uh, been talking about uh, correlates of protection or the lack of uh, precise correlates of protection uh, that is the main hurdle in uh, developing a safe and effective uh, dengue vaccine. So, and uh, in, in current dengue vaccine trials uh, and, and in other trials, the, it's a neutralizing antibody test uh, that are, me that are used to uh, uh, measure correlates of protection. But, uh, but uh, with the vaccine trial, uh, we, which showed that a failure uh, of responses or the failure of pr protection against the dengue 2 virus, uh, all those children had very high levels of 
antibodies uh, were measured by the neutralization antibody test, but then yet they were not protected. So uh, uh, in our center for dengue research, our main research is understanding the immune responses of those who have mild dengue or non-apparent dengue infections. Uh, in, in other words, people who are infected with the dengue virus, but uh, who, who are not recognized that they have infection. So which is either have, they have asymptomatic dengue infection or uh, 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 just a viral fever like illness. So uh, uh, we have uh, done this study, we have uh, initiated study in early uh, uh, 2012, uh, end of 2012, and uh, we have recruited more than 1,000 people so far. And uh, we bleed them uh, every uh, uh, 15 to uh, 15 months or so, uh, one year to 18 months. And uh, at the time of recruitment, we do their dengue antibody antibodies to see if uh, they are antibody positive or negative. And then we do this T cell based assay, which I'll explain in a minute, to see uh, what sort of serotypes they have been infected with. And this is not the neutralization assay, but a T cell based assay which we have developed. Uh, which we use to identify the past infecting serotypes in these individuals and also how many infections they've had in the past and uh, what sort of antibody responses they have to dengue, what sort of antibody responses, anti-cell responses they have to dengue and other flaviviruses which circulate in our region. So, uh, in our study cohort, uh, surprisingly quite a few of them, uh, a large proportion of them were zero positive for dengue, and we found that the older they got, of course, the more likely uh, they were they were likely to be zero positive. So basically, uh, after 40 years of age, more than 90% had zero converted. And uh, we were very uh, in uh, particular about looking at T cell responses in, in very detail. So uh, so in, in this thousand something cohort that we have, uh, about 80 80 individuals have had a history of past severe dengue infection. In other words, had a dengue hemorrhagic fever and uh, and been hospitalized. The rest of the seropositive individuals uh, are seropositive for dengue, but uh, they, they, ne they were never diagnosed as having a dengue infection. In other words, they've had a non-apparent dengue infection. <laughs> so uh, in order to understand uh, the correlates of infection, we are trying to find the functionality of immune responses in those who had past severe dengue and those who had non-apparent dengue infection. So we are looking at, uh, we are, we are uh, using these uh, Elispot assays, XVB Elispot assays to look at inform gamma and other type of cytokines, gramsine B, TNF alpha and R2 levels to find out the function differences in the functionality of the T cell responses in those who have had past CP dengue and past non-apparent dengue infection. Uh, but most importantly, uh, 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 what we want to do in our study is to find out uh, uh, how many individuals have had uh, uh, the, the infecting serotypes in the individuals and to also to find out how many infections, uh, silent infections, the non-apparent dengue infect infected individuals have. So for this, we have a panel of uh, peptides. Uh, we have about four or five peptides covering each uh, dengue viral serotype and we do a culture dengue spot assay. So in, in, in our cohort of individuals, we, we do this T-cell assay and using this, we can find out uh, the past, uh, what type of uh, past infecting serotypes they've had. Now, uh, some use the uh, PRNT to use this, the uh, plaque reduction neutralization assay, but when people have had several infecting serotypes, the uh, people who do PRNT say that, you know, the results can be, you know, like, uh, because of the enhancing antibodies, it's difficult to interpret the results. So, but with this uh, assay, which, which we do a culture expert assay for various serotypes, our uh, results have been uh, quite, uh, uh, quite good. Uh, so, for instance, uh, uh, using this uh, cultured expert assays for these various peptides for the four serotypes, we've also tested uh, around 40 seronegative individuals, and nobody responded to any of the uh, serotype specific peptides. And uh, during our study cohort, uh, the uh, two of these individuals actually got dengue hemorrhagic fever, who were in initial seronegative and did not respond to any of the peptides. But after they had the dengue hemorrhagic fever episode, we retested them and we found that both of them responded to dengue 1 serotype, which is the predominant circulating serotype at this moment. And also, we have done uh, uh, these, uh, we've done uh, data analysis of uh, currently 120 dengue serotype, uh, dengue 
zero positive individuals, uh, both uh, Stephen Denki and Parsons and Nepal Denki. So uh, we are still we're still uh, doing these assays, and so far all the zero uh, positive individuals respond to at least uh, one Denki vital serotype. So um, uh, what, what what we need want to understand by looking at these serotypes is. Uh, were, were the infecting serotypes in patients with passive dengue different from those uh, with past asymptomatic dengue? Uh, because uh, actually nobody's carefully looked at uh, the infecting serotypes in past asymptomatic dengue. So whether the sequence in, in infection with various serotypes, whether they play a ro role in uh, getting uh, dengue hemorrhagic fever, and uh, how the past infecting uh, serotype determine the quality and quantity of the dengue viral uh, specific T cell responses and uh, often the differences in the dengue specific T cell responses in those who develop uh, severe dengue uh, during the study period. So uh, we have a lot of a huge team uh, working uh, on, on uh, this project which we call Dengue Watch and uh, uh, Professor Graham Mock uh, from University of Oxford uh, is uh, contributing uh, in a big way for this study and also Professor Nji Mali uh, from National University of Singapore is also a collaborator uh, of this project. So uh, the funding was, of course, uh, we've got a big uh, government funding mainly uh, from the Center for Dengue Research uh, from the government of Sri Lanka, and also our from our collaborators from University of Oxford and National Science Foundation Sri Lanka. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Nilika.